Okay, and one point I wanted to make is <clears throat> during um, uh, the reign of the Nazis, the first place they went to do experiments was on psychiatric people, people in psychiatric institutions. Um, in America, during the MK Ultra experiments that became widely publicly known in the 70s, um, <clears throat> it turned out that the first place that the CIA went to do these mind control experiments was psychiatric institutions, prisons, jails, and uh, people in the military. Okay. And one point I want to get across is just because somebody has been diagnosed with a mental illness, if they actually have that mental illness or not, that doesn't mean that that person is not a victim of organized stalking or gang stalking or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> that's not going to stop a person from being gang stalked. So there could be people that actually have paranoid schizophrenia or other dementia mental illnesses and they're still victims of gang stalking. And people at psychiatric institutions, you know, again, these people are not criminal investigators. They're not they're they're there to determine if you have a mental illness or not. And the same questions that a criminal investigator would be asking to determine if this is a crime that's happening to you is the same questions that's going to be asked to determine <clears throat> if you have a mental illness. So if you're saying all these people are following me around, my neighbors, uh, even my friends are in on it, the police are involved. You see what I'm saying? That's the same thing that's happening to somebody that's actually a victim of gang stalking. So, what determines if the person is crazy or not is a thin line. Like, there's people all over the world who are saying um, in, in, in detail the same exact things. Cars with their brights on in broad daylight. People following them wearing specific colors. Uh, noise campaigns. Their phones are being listened into. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're in a world today to where all these government agencies have already told the public for, like, like the last, since 2001 especially, for like the last 20 years, the government's been saying the NSA is reading every email, the NSA is recording every phone call, um, FBI teams have new surveillance techniques to to watch the public for terrorism and all this stuff. So all these agencies that have come forward and say they're intensely watching the public, when people say they're being watched, then everybody says it's not really happening. So how is it that on one end, the government's public publicly making it known that they're watching everybody, but on the other end, when people step up and say they're being watched, people are saying, everybody tells them it's not happening. That doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, people, people have not been properly introduced to the subject of gang stalking, and there's a lot of information about cases um, that are public, but people aren't aware of that because they don't know where to go to get the information. They hear gangs talking and they Google it, and there's a lot of information that you can Google, and they see a couple videos and they think it's not real. You know, <clears throat> um, when when I was committed against my will, um, I had walked a long ways and a police officer tried to drive me home and I didn't want to go with him. So he called an ambulance and the ambulance came and picked me up 
And when I got back to the hospital, a doctor asked me a question, and I told him that I needed a glass of water. Then he asked me another question. I told him I needed a glass of water. Then he put in his paperwork that there was something wrong with me. You see what I'm saying? And the whole hospital was gang-stalking me. Like, everywhere I went, from the main hospital to the psychiatric institution connected to the hospital, I was being literally gang-stalked through the whole thing. And I was gang-stalked all through my court trial about some girl who was stalking me. Like, for people who don't know... <clears throat> Okay, I met a woman across the street from me. Um, she lived at 4663 Lauren Drive, and I lived at 4650 Lauren Drive. And this is in Norton Shores, Michigan. It's a subdivision off High Island, Old Grand Haven. And back in 2012, I was walking, it's a cul-de-sac neighborhood, and I was walking around the cul-de-sac, minding my own business, and a woman with red hair came out of the Pastuka family house and introduced herself to me. And I had been <clears throat> I had been seeing her off and on. Like she would drive by and smile at me and wave and sometimes I would wave back. And she had a sister named Samantha Pastuka that looked just like her. They even looked like twins. Anyhow, I think she said her name was Jamie. I, I forgot her name for a long time. But then one day I remembered that I think she said her name was Jamie because I remember at the time when she told me her name, it made me think of another girl that I knew with that same name. Anyhow, um, I had talked to her a few times after that. One time she was going to get her hair done and I had spoken to her for a little bit. Then I had seen her at some woman's, some woman that lived on the other side of the cul-de-sac named Joanne. She was, she stopped by over there while I was over there and I said hi to her. Anyhow, <clears throat> the, the woman Joanne had told me that the girl had been raped by a teacher. And then after I heard that, that made me like scared because the girl was 17 and I was 26. So it made me think to stay away, you know, cause I don't know if the teacher actually did that or not. I didn't know the scenario. So I didn't know, because I know there are women out there who, like, especially younger girls, they'll talk to an older guy, then sometimes they'll lie and say the guy did something he didn't do or whatever. <clears throat> so, so I, um, so I kind of distanced myself away from talking to her. Then in the summer of 2015, um, when this gang stalking stuff started happening after I did my interview with Jordan Maxwell and exposed him on the internet for all the horrible things that he did to me, uh, this girl started following me around every single day. And this wasn't just one time a day or two times a day. This was literally like every fucking day this would go on. In the neighborhood, out of the neighborhood. I remember going to Grand Haven and be happening in Grand Haven which is a long ways away from, from where I lived. Um, in Grand Rapids, this would be going on. Um, in downtown Muskegon, eventually Muskegon Heights, this was going on all over the place. And so, <clears throat> eventually I wanted to, like at, the, at that time, I wanted to speak to the woman, you know what I'm saying, to figure out what was going on. Why was her family doing this to me? Why were all these neighbors doing this? And, you know, why was she doing this? And so I had sent her some flowers. And then um, the gang stalking increased. She was following me around even more. And so I really didn't get that. And then in the summer of 2016, um, I, I was making videos telling her she didn't have any gang stalking and all that stuff. And the police ended up coming to my home Norton Shores to police, a bunch of police. They came into my house like this was some sort of like bank robbery case or something. It was a bunch of them. And <clears throat> Detective Kyle Neer um, was like the lead cop in the case. And I found that at my trial, he was a Freemason. And Robin Stuka was a Freemason. 
and I don't know if they became Freemasons during this time that they were doing this to me, or if they were already Freemasons, but um, he said, did you try to pull Robin's daughter out of a car? And I said, I, you know, I said, no, I didn't put, try to pull anybody out of a car. And so that was their whole case, but instead of it being Jamie Pastuka, the girl that looked like Samantha Pastuka, the one with the red hair that I had sent the flowers to, they put Amanda Cherry in the police report. And they said that I had approached her car and she was scared and he, t and he was the one who told me that I tried to pull her out of a car and they said she ran through a red light to get out of the neighborhood. But the funny thing is, is Amanda Cherry, even according to the police report, never lived in that neighborhood. Amanda Cherry lived in Roosevelt Park, <coughs> which is a separate city from Northern Shores. Okay, it's still in Muskegon County, but it's a separate city. So I never saw Amanda Cherry other than uh, at the trial. And I never even heard Amanda Cherry's name other than in the police report and at the trial. So that was their story that I tried to pull Amanda Cherry out of a car and that I had sent Amanda Cherry flowers at the Pastuka residence even though she didn't live there. So how the hell, why the hell would I try to pull her out of a car and then send her flowers to an address she didn't even live at? How would I even know she was connected to those people? That doesn't make any sense. I guess supposedly she's Robin Pastuka's daughter through a previous marriage or something. I don't know, but it, the whole none of it makes any sense. So I try to pull some woman out of a car, and she runs through a red light to get away. She never makes a police report about that encounter, and then I start sending her flowers to a house across the street that I don't even know that she doesn't even live in. How would I even know that she was visiting those people? That, i never seen her before. And so then they said, after I sent the flowers, I was making YouTube videos about her. So this whole case was fabricated um, by the Pastuka family and by Detective Deer and God knows who else, who else was involved. I'm very sure that the police department <clears throat> and the Freemasons had came up with this because that's who was gang stalking me, the Freemasons. Okay. And so after I was arrested, the girl that I sent the flowers to originally that actually lived at that house, she continued to follow me around over and over again. At, at, like right at like as soon as I got out, of, I was out of jail the next day. Then no, that same night I was out of jail, and the next day she was still gang stalking me. So, and at that point, I had never been to a psychiatric institution or any of those places. I had never been accused of having a mental illness or anything. It wasn't until these people started stalking me and harassing me. And then I go to the psychiatric institution and the people that are working there are gang stalking me. And then they're claiming that I have some sort of mental disability or something like that. And I just went through a series of harassment, getting set up to be killed in California, coming back home, explaining this on the internet getting gang stalked, followed around by the same girl, all I did was send her flowers and make some YouTube videos. And then they turned around as I tried to pull some woman out of a car I never even seen in my life before. So this is fucking crazy, you know. And um, the judge, Judge Raymond J. Castrava, like he was completely pro-conviction. When I got up on the stand and I said I didn't know a man Jerry, that I had sent flowers to the other daughter, he was really upset, but that was the truth. Why bring me in a courtroom and prosecute me for a crime I didn't commit? Like what the fuck were what the fuck were they getting out of that? And so I had to spend I spent a year in jail for a crime I didn't even commit commit. And then when I got out of jail I had to go back to community mental health under the court order. So I sat there at the community mental health building explaining to these people my YouTube videos and explaining to these people that I was a victim of stalking. See what I'm saying? And nobody did anything to help me 
Nobody did anything to stop any of this. Um, people that I had known my whole life were involved in all this stuff. And it was just a horrible, horrible, horrible event that took place in my life to hurt and maim me. I don't see how it helped that neighborhood. I don't see how it helped me. I don't see how any of this helped anybody. So, you know, I was framed. I know that.